been living with Big B. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. You're watching Been Living with Big B, and uh, tonight I thought I'd cook you um, some beautiful dinners, some home comforts. Um, tonight menu is um, fried chicken, creamy mashed potatoes, uh, soft Brussels sprouts smothered in a beautiful cheese sauce. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Hey guys, uh, yep, so I'm um, right now I'm preparing the uh, chicken. Uh, it would uh, ideally be um, soaked for a few hours in uh, buttermilk, but um, I don't have any buttermilk, so a, a salty brine is uh, good enough. Um, what the salty brine will do is help break down the protein in the chicken and uh, leave, make it nice and tender. Um, yeah, so uh, so it's been soaking in um, a salted, a salty brine for a little bit, which is just basically a water, a little bit of vinegar, and plenty of salt. Um, I've left it here for a couple of hours, and um, yeah, now I'm ready to sort of pat the chicken dry, and um, and get ready for dredging. So uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so um, so now I'm um, patting dry the uh, chicken pieces. I'm using a chicken thigh uh, cutlet. Um, I like using the chicken thigh cutlet because it's nice and moist, and um, and well, that's enough for me. It's nice and moist. So I make sure I pat the chicken dry as best as possible. Um, this way the dredge, the flour dredge is um, going to take to the uh, chicken better. Also another handy tip um, for fried chicken is that don't cook it straight out of the fridge. Make sure that it's make sure that it's room temperature. So even though I had it in the brine and refrigerated for a couple of hours, I took it out about at least a half an hour before. because it'll affect the temperature of the oil when it starts cooking. If you put it in cold, it'll drop the temperature drastically. So we're patting this chicken dry as you can. Put that bad boy over. You can see this is accepting all the moisture. This is a really important part guys, I mean, all these steps are really important. So, I'm just going to leave that on there. Okay, so um, that's drying off. Going to bring it back up to the uh, room temperature. It's going to be about five minutes. And uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, we're back and the uh, chicken's been sitting for a little bit now and is uh, definitely at room temperature. So now I've got some chicken shake here. So in here I've got... Um, uh, salt, uh, pepper, paprika, and uh, garlic powder, and so now I'm going to get set to uh, coat this chicken with the shake. So, so be quite liberal with it.
give it this. Flip it around. So there we go. Just uh, make sure we get it all there. Okay. So uh, now we've well seasoned the chicken. We want to do it underneath the dredge. If we season the flour um, first, the uh, the seasoning has a tendency to burn. So uh, it's it's um, underneath the flour. Uh, so it's going to be protected, so that's why I season the chicken meat first, then dredge, and then we're going to get into the frying, so yeah, let's get into it. Going to dredge next, be right back. Okay, so I'm, um, I've already dredged, flour dredged uh, some of the pieces here, I'm cooking um, six of them tonight. A couple for dinner couple each for me and my wife and a couple for Smoko so I've got a bag here of all-purpose flour just a couple of cups for a bit of shake around, shake around like that so she's nicely fully coated Now, once you've done your flour dredge, be sure you shake off all the excess because what will happen is if you drop it in the pan and the flour falls off, it'll burn the chicken. So be sure to shake off all that excess flour, guys. Now, I don't claim to say that this is the best fried chicken i just say that i love this version it's so quick and easy cello fried okay i'll just put this to the side you can use it for another day don't want to use it for anything else it's got chicken shit in it So now um, the oil, I've just uh, turned it on and um, we're going to set that up to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is, I have no idea what that would be in, so, so I think it's around about 210 in Celsius. So um, when I start seeing a, a nice wisp of smoke which is pretty much soon because I've got it on a, a medium to high heat and I'm just using a canola oil here it's got a real high um, uh, range for heat I will drop the chicken in in the meantime Actually, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to prepare the uh, Brussels sprouts, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm um, going to accompany the um, fried chicken with uh, creamy mashed potatoes and uh, Brussels sprouts. So I've cut the ends of them, cut them off, off them all, and then I've cut uh, deep cuts into the stems crossways so then while they steam because that's how I'm going to cook them I'm going to put them in the steamer just like that. they're going to sit in the steamer and um, 
underneath the steam apart in the water that will be steamed. I've got uh, beautiful new potatoes. So while they bubble and boil, they're going to steam our Brussels sprouts. And that should take about 15 to 20 minutes. The fried chicken will take about 24 minutes, 12 minutes on each side at 350 degrees. I've just turned the temperature up just a touch so it um, reaches that temperature. I'm going to turn these on right now. Put the lid on. And um, after the chicken's cooked, I'll keep it warm in the oven uh, while I prepare the rest of the vegetables. And then I'm going to make a. Uh, uh, gonna see if I've got the ingredients to make a creamy uh, cheese sauce for the bustle sprouts. So, yep, we're all go, guys. And um, I'll turn everything on and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're, now we're starting to put the chicken pieces in. Don't want to crowd them too much. That skin side down first. I'm putting the uh, heavier piece of the So we're just going to leave that for 12 minutes. I'm going to put this uh, spit tray on there. So 12 minutes time, we're going to be ready to flip that over. Uh, before we flip it over, we'll turn the heat up just a little bit, just because it will now be exposed to the colder side, but we'll address that when it comes. So, yep, um, the potatoes are uh, boiling away. The um, Brussels sprouts are ready to be steamed and we're going to get these prepared and ready. So yeah, we'll see you back when it's time to flip them over. Okay guys, so um, I'm making a cheese sauce. So right now I'm making the roux. Yeah, it's hard to do it with one hand. <laughs> So I've got equal parts flour and equal parts butter or fat. So I'm just going to stir that until it comes to a sandy consistency, sandy texture. And then I will add the milk which will be around about 40 mils. So I'll be right back so I can do this properly. <laughs> So I've got the roux into a uh, sandy consistency, sandy look. Now I'm going to add about 30 mils of the milk. And I'm going to whisk that in. I'll just break this down a little bit. So um, I'll be right back. So I need both hands for this. <laughs> right back guys. So I've added the milk and uh, whisked it quite thoroughly. Um, it's slowly thickening up as we did hoped. Um, I'm going to add the last few mils of the uh, milk and then the cheese. First, I'm just going to give it a good season. Excuse me, see, okay. It's thickening up just right there. Gonna keep working it. I'll put it on a low heat. I'm sure I'm gonna take it off the heat. Add the last 10 mil. I'm gonna whisk it in. Chicken's about one minute away from being turned over. So once I mix this milk in. Like right there is good. 
I'm going to take it off the heat, turn it off, right there, and then we're going to flip our chicken over and just check it out. <clears throat> so there you go guys, 12 minutes, we've got a nice perfectly brown consistency. You can see the blood is starting to come to the surface. That's exactly what you wanted to see. That's exactly what I wanted to see. And put those bad boys over. So as I said before, now that the, the oil has been subject to the colder part of the chicken, so we're going to just up the temperature up a little bit. To a medium high heat. This is good. So another 12 minutes on that. 12 to 15. So our bechamel is uh, looking pretty good. I'm just going to add just a little bit more milk in there. It needs to be a little bit runnier because once the cheese goes in, it is going to be nice and thick. So it's going to coat the um, Brussels sprouts. So let's put the heat back on. Got the cheese already grated here. Preparation is the key. We're just going to put a nice big handful right in there like that. We're going to use it all. We're going to make it nice and cheesy. We put this back on the heat, and we're going to just work this cheese in until it melts. It's incorporated into the sauce. Not only that, but I can hear the um, yeah, beautiful. I can hear the bubble uh, potatoes bubbling away. Uh, steam is just starting to be forced in through the. And I think the cheese has well incorporated into that sauce. I'm going to turn it off the heat. Give it a little bit of a taste. Look at that, this beautiful coating right there. Exactly what you want to see. Mmm. Yep. That is perfect, just a little bit of seasoning, just to finish that off and that'll be perfect. So um, everything's quickly starting to come together, be right back. Okay, so we've just checked the spuds and the uh, bustle sprouts and they are ready. Potatoes are nice and soft, ready for mashing. Beautiful. Woo, damn. <laughs> Watch out, y'all. Let me just give that a quick. Uh, there we go. The uh, Brussels sprouts are nice and soft, cooked all the way through. Beautiful. 
beautiful. Those are going to be so delicious with their cheese sauce. So um, I'm going to mash the potatoes, I'm going to prepare the, uh, uh, get the Brussels sprouts ready, the chickens, another three minutes from being done. I'm going to put that onto the rack and let them drip dry for a little bit and let them rest. Um, the cheese sauce is done and then we'll be ready for plating. So I'll be right back straight after the potatoes are done. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, remove the chicken from the heat and put it onto the tray here. So uh, let's have it. Nice. That's exactly what I was looking for, that it'll be darker than the top side. So just to be safe, I'm going to cut one of these bad boys open. But I'm pretty confident that we have got uh, well-cooked chicken here. So I'm going to have to put you down. I'm going to need two hands with this bad boy. Well, I absolutely monster cut that one. But as you can see, it is cooked all the way through. No pinkness. Still nice and moist. Nice crispy skin. Uh, just have to just try this bit right here. Just had to try this bit right. This bit is better. Oh, stop it. Stop it, guys. So that chicken is definitely ready. I'm going to remove the rest. Put that on there. oil okay so I'm just gonna let that rest for um, a couple of minutes and then um, we're gonna plate up our potatoes have been mashed I like mine nice and buttery uh, this is a really uh, this is an agria type potato so it's, it's quite starchy um, it's quite starchy as you can see the it's a really firm, solid potato. Oh my goodness, stop it. That is delicious. Still steaming hot. So, yep, let's plate up and let's eat. So here we have it, guys. The plated uh, result. We've got um, homemade fried chicken creamy mashed potatoes and Brussels sprouts done in a fluffy creamy cheese sauce topped up with a little bit of cracked pepper it's simple it's a uh, home comfort food it's made real easy and um, yeah now it's time to eat thanks for watching guys I hope uh, you get a chance to uh, make this meal and enjoy it as much as I've made uh, this. I enjoy it as much as I've made it for you to see. <laughs> so I'm going to take mine to my darling. Uh, here's the fish. There you go, sweetheart. Thank you. Oh my God, it's a really fancy. Yeah, it's KFB. KFB. Yep. The Big B. Kentucky Fried Big B. Yeah. Yeah. Sit. Yeah. So before we have a kite, we all, or have a feed, we always uh, say our prayers and we give thanks. So Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the food we are about to receive. May it nourish our bodies. We ask that you um, bless our children both near and far, and all our friends and family, in the power and glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Time to eat now, guys. See you later.
that they couldn't, so. couldn't, 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 uh, couldn't go walk away without um, at least have a sharing a bite with you. Because it's one thing cooking it, but it's another thing being able to enjoy it with people you love. Mm. Brussels sprouts aren't everybody's cup of tea, eh? But me and my darling, we love Brussels sprouts. And I have for a long time, even from young. You too? Me too. Mm. I used to hate them, didn't I can taste them. I think it is because um, we always had like cabbage. Mm. And one of my favourite, one of my favourite comfort foods is boiled sausages, boiled potatoes and boiled cabbage. Who would have thought that, you know, that's a special, oh, they are cabbage, you know? From the same genus. Mm. Mm. I'm telling you guys, that skin is really crispy, and um, the chicken's really tender. And that um, seasoning I put on the chicken before the flour dredge really comes through. And it's, mm. all it is is just seasoning. I just want to pick it up with my fingers. <laughs> mm. And they're hard. That um, cheese sauce on the Brussels sprouts is really smooth. It's not lumpy at all. It's just um, well balanced. <laughs> oh God. That is amazing. You should see my darling's face. And when she says things are amazing, that's quite an accolade, I have to say so. She is my harshest, harshest of critics. She just, and she doesn't do it to be mean, she just does it to be like straight up. She'll tell you if it's dry, she'll tell you if it's underdone, she'll, <laughs> hey my darling, you're just straight up like that. But the secret to that is just ensuring you do the, have the right temperatures, Ensuring that um, you leave it there for the right times and you don't muck around and stir it around. Just let the chicken cook. As I'm sure you um, fried chicken lovers out there have got your own recipes. Not test of fighting. So anyway, this isn't a mukbang. This is me just eating dinner with my darling and just wanted to share with you just how easy it is. So, good night.